all the children are going over into the fellowship hall to practice the drama, or, well, play. Don't want no drama. But uh, we're glad that you're here tonight and glad everybody's getting in place. Uh, I'd like to thank the Lord for Rudy's coming home today. And so thank God for that. Didn't have to have surgery, so we're thankful for that. And I also would like to thank the Lord for some prayers that he's answered, some real small and then one great big one that he answered. But when he answers them, that's a good thing. It, amen. amen. So appreciate the Lord tonight. Uh, my wife's not here tonight. She's got that stomach bug, so y'all pray for her. And so I'm going to try to stay my distance away from everybody. So if I don't shake your hand or hug you tonight, feel privileged about it. Amen. <laughs> Uh, it'll do you some good to, to probably distance yourself. And so uh, I've, uh, Brother Roy's going to preach tonight. And so we're excited uh, uh, about y'all getting to hear him. I've got to run over here for a few minutes. But uh, get right into the service tonight. You done drove all the way here. Done got everybody ready. Fought them all the way here to get them here. And now you're here. Amen. So enjoy the service while you're here. Amen. Anybody got a prayer request tonight? I'll pray for my mom and dad. Amen, brother. My dad's hard-headed, and he don't want to ask for help, but, you know, that's yeah. just the way we're raised. Amen. And pray for my dad to be saved. Amen. Amen. Remember that. Pray Amen. My sister and brother-in-law. Yeah. Amen. Remember them. Amen. Uh, a lot of folks need a touch from the Lord, don't they? Amen. Yes, Shirley. Bless her, Lord. Mm -hmm. Bless you. Bless you now. Amen. Remember that. Somebody else tonight. Amen. 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 Somebody else. Mm -hmm. Yes. Amen. Remember that. They are moving on. Uh, I mean, by the droves, it seems like. I'm glad there's a forwarding address we can have that far better than this place, I'll tell you that. Ain't no sickness over there, thank God. Anybody else got a request before we pray? Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Glory to God for that. Sure. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pray for him. Remember that. Yeah, bless you. Her mother in law, they just took her off of Oh, Lord. Amen. 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 Anyone else tonight? Bless you, brother. Amen. Remember that. Always somebody out there has it tougher than what we do. Eh? Yeah, Anyone else tonight? Amen. Amen. Bless you, sis. Amen. Amen. Remember that. Anyone else? Bless you, sis. Amen. 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 Hey, I'm thankful for it, too. Amen. Ain't that good? I praise the Lord for that, amen. That's good. Boy, uh, Lindsay was standing back there, and I seen that coat, and I thought, she got a dog with her tonight? Uh, that's how bad my eyesight's getting, amen. 
Uh, it's good to be here tonight. Just don't let these prayer requests bring you down. Now, we've still got a great big God that can handle every one of them, and he can answer them. Amen. Anybody else tonight before we come and pray? Amen. Amen. Remember that. Anyone else? Well, bless your heart. Amen. I like it on that fashion. Amen. All righty. Well, it's called altar prayer. That means God's people gathers around the altar. Don't mean they stay in their seat. Now, if you're physically unable to come, I understand that. But let's come around this altar, storm the altar, and call out on God. Amen. Thank God for being here tonight. Hello, Mason. Hey, buddy. Hey, man, what a dog. Hey, man. Hey, man, praise the Lord. Before we call on his names, everybody glad they know him Amen. and are able to pray. Amen. Ain't that a blessing? Amen. Chris Massengill, if you'll lead us tonight, brother. Father, we come to you, Lord, on behalf of our church and the people gathered here tonight. Lord, I praise you for everyone being here. I pray, God, that you bless each and every home. God, you know the prayer request that's been made here tonight. I pray, God, that you would uh, move in those situations, God. Each one's different, but each one is needful. And God, I pray, Lord, that you'd move there. Uh, like only you can. God, we'd be, it'd be a great service to come in and thank you for answering all these prayers. Uh, Lord, as we're praying tonight, I pray for Rudy and his family. I pray, God, that you do a work there that only you can do. I pray for these that are lost and undone without you, God. I pray you save them before it's everlasting too late. God, in our sick here at the church, I pray for them, God, that you'd help them. Uh, Lord, to get over their sickness. Uh, uh, lots going around today, and I pray, Lord, for them that you'll put your healing hand upon them. And uh, I just pray that, God, you'd have your will in perfect way here tonight. That you bless Brother Roy as he stands to preach your word, God, that you give him souls for his labor. And, God, that you'd uh, deliver the message through him that would be helpful uh, to our church, God. Uh, thankful uh, for the opportunity to be here. Not uh, feeling the best herself, but we are here and we're thankful to be here and ask your blessings upon everyone represented here tonight. God, that special need that maybe nobody's mentioned or uh, maybe they've not uh, told many people about it, God, but there's a need there. I pray you meet it tonight. And God, you help you people. Lord, feed the hungry, save the lost, we do pray. And may you get the glory out of our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thankful, thankful. Amen. Amen. Anybody got a word of a testimony before? Brother Roy comes tonight. Anybody at all? Yes, Miss Rob. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank God. Amen. Anyone else tonight? Bless her, Lord. Yeah. Bless your honor. Bless her heart. Amen. 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 Anyone else tonight? Amen. All right. I want to thank the Lord for Brandy's testimony there. Praise God. And that could have been a lot different, but I'm so glad that the Lord showed up for her. That ought to encourage you that if he done it for her, he can show up for your life too. Amen. It excites me when God answers prayers. Especially when people's been praying and people's been really concerned about that situation. And God comes on the scene, shows up in a mighty way. And that relief that you feel, that's a God thing right there, neighbor. And I'm so thankful he's still doing it. Amen. Still answering prayers. What a God we serve. If all's done in, 
Brother Roy, you come on, brother. Thank you, brother. God bless you. Amen. It is to be good to be in God's house. Hope and pray that you've had a good day. Hope and pray that God's just blessed you in a mighty way. Uh, uh, no matter what we go through, we can look and say God's been good. Uh, if uh, uh, we open our eyes up, it's a good day. Uh, someone asked me, he said, how you doing uh, the other day? I said, well, I'm above ground. That's a good thing. And it is. It is good to be alive. Uh, uh, there's uh, so much that we go through in life, but I'm glad that we're, we don't go through it alone. I'm glad I don't have to worry about uh, what we go through, that I've got a God that is able to do far exceedingly abundantly. Above that, I'm able to ask or even think. I'm glad he's a good God. You got your Bibles tonight, want to read with us? Very familiar passage. Uh, try not to hold you too long. Uh, uh, had this on our heart for a few days and uh, just made some notes uh, last night and just couldn't get away from it today over in the book of Luke, chapter number 15. We'll uh, read up two verses and uh, uh, just uh, go right along with uh, what we do, uh, think about tonight and uh, try to encourage you and uh, let you uh, uh, go away uh, thinking about how good God is. But here in Luke chapter 15, very familiar verses, very familiar story here. Uh, if you've been in church any amount of time, uh, uh, you've probably heard about everything preached or taught out of this. But here in Luke chapter 15, we'll read, pick it up in verse number 18. Prodigal son here, he says this, I will arise and go uh, to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me one uh, as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father, but when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. You can be seated tonight. I uh, love uh, this story. It's a great story. Uh, if you uh, study it out any, uh, uh, you'll see in uh, Luke chapter 15, this is, uh, so, some folks call it the lost chapter. You'll uh, see that it starts out with the uh, lost sheep and the lost coin and uh, then uh, Jesus begins to speak about uh, the prodigal. We can see that the prodigal is nothing more than uh, someone that has got away from the uh, presence of God and got away from his father that uh, uh, we can study it out and see uh, so many things. But we see here that in uh, verse uh, number uh, 20 that the Bible talks about, uh, uh, verse number 21, what the, uh, uh, and on down you uh, read in verse 22 uh, how, what the father did. And he he says, I bring forth the best uh, robe. And you uh, study that robe out and uh, what uh, that signific uh, significant in the story. Uh, it covers up uh, that that the prodigal went through. Uh, uh, see, uh, that's nothing more than salvation. Uh, uh, we understand that the Bible says the prodigal was down in the hog pen. Uh, he was uh, down uh, in the world. And uh, then when he comes to the father, the first thing the father says is, uh, get a robe, get something to cover uh, what he's been through. And I'm glad, Brother Jeff, that uh, our Lord is that way. Uh, uh, that uh, what we went through and uh, the things that we've done is now covered covered uh, by the blood of the Lord. Uh, then you see there the Bible says that he asked, uh, he said put a ring upon his hand. Uh, it didn't say a finger, it said his hand. Uh, put a ring. Now that must have been one honking ring. Uh, it must have been a big thing. Uh, uh, but what that ring signif uh, is significant is uh, it says that this uh, son that was once lost, uh, this son that was once uh, in rebellion uh, is now part of the family and he He's got the authority uh, as uh, my son. Uh, uh, see, now we got to understand as Christians, uh, we've got some authority. It, yes. We don't act like it sometimes. Uh, sometimes the church don't act like it. Uh, but the Bible says, the Lord told uh, the disciples, uh, what you uh, uh, bind on earth is bound in heaven, uh, and what is loosed on earth uh, is loosed in heaven. We've got authority. We don't have to cower uh, like the world wants us to. Uh, uh, may 
I say we don't have to put up with everything the devil throws our way. We've got some authority as being a Christian and a son of the God and the son of Jesus that we can stand and say, devil, you, I'm not going to let you put me through this. I've got authority. I am somebody through him. So you see the authority there. Not only that, but you see the Bible says, the father said, now put some shoes on his feet. What does that mean, preacher? Well, you got to understand, back in that day, they wouldn't give the slaves or a servant shoes. Why is that? Because they knew they would run away if they'd had shoes on. This boy, when he come home, he was no more a servant. He was no more afraid. The father wasn't afraid of him running off anymore. He said, put some shoes on him. I'm not afraid because he's come home. I want him to be there. So we see there the father restored. I'm glad he restored him. I'm glad that when we come to the Lord that he'll restore us. That that the canker worm is stolen. That things that we went through. We may bear some scars of it. But God begins to restore us. And brings us part of the family. So we see that the prodigal is no more than a picture of a sinner. Uh, we see that the prodigal is no more uh, than that one that has went away from God. Uh, uh, but I, I want to look tonight uh, uh, not at the prodigal, but at the father. Uh, see, now if the prodigal is a par, uh, uh, is the sinner, and the prodigal is a picture of uh, one that has been uh, uh, separated from the father, uh, then the father is nothing more than a picture uh, of the Lord. Uh, it, it's nothing more... Uh, than that one uh, uh, that you see. Uh, see, now you see there that uh, uh, the Father is that one that brings him back. Uh, uh, you see, uh, there's three things that you'll see here uh, uh, in this story. Uh, number one, you'll see uh, uh, that the picture uh, of the prodigal, uh, you'll see uh, nothing more than a picture of ever home uh, in uh, in human race. Uh, uh, we are all, uh, under, we got to understand this, the Bible the Bible says uh, there's none righteous, I know not one. Uh, we've all uh, sinned. We've all fallen short. Uh, we all have got to come back. Uh, uh, I believe that in the heart of every human, uh, there's a hole. Uh, and, and it's like a puzzle. Uh, I was putting a puzzle together with my grandkids not long ago, and uh, I, I couldn't find a piece. And my granddaughter, uh, uh, being five, she found a piece, and she stuck it on top. It didn't fit, and she hid it. Uh, uh, and I said, no, that don't work that way. Uh, uh, that's the way our lives are. Uh, you look around, many folks are trying to fill the peace uh, uh, with everything else. Uh, uh, you see, they're trying to fill it with drugs. Uh, they're trying to fill it with alcohol. Uh, many folks are trying to fill it with uh, uh, getting more money, uh, uh, getting fame, uh, getting more likes on Facebook or Instagram. Uh, uh, we see it uh, in every aspect of life, there's a hole in the lives of people uh, and nothing can fill that void but one thing uh, and that's the Son of God. Uh, that is Jesus. Uh, he's the only one that can fill that void. Uh, you can try everything around and you can look around this world. Uh, I don't care who it is. Uh, we were born uh, with that hole. Uh, we were born separated uh, from a holy God uh, and there's only one thing that will fill it. Uh, but it depends upon everybody uh, uh, oh, that's looking around. Uh, they're looking for something to fill that void. Uh, I don't care uh, how old you are or how young. Uh, there's a hole there. And, and the only thing that will fill that is the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, you'll see number two. Uh, uh, you'll see uh, the value of every human now look, uh, in Luke chapter 15, uh, we call it the lost chapter. The first thing you see uh, is the lost sheep. Uh, now, uh, what, does, uh, what value is a sheep? Uh, the Jews valued the sheep. Uh, the Jews valued the sheep more than anything. Uh, then you go on over and you see that there's a lost coin. Uh, 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 who valued the coin? The Romans did. Uh, the Romans put value upon the coin. Uh, but then you see uh, the prodigal, uh, the lost 
lost son. Uh, who yeah. values that? Uh, uh, God. Uh, uh, God values people. Uh, God values a uh, soul. Uh, I believe uh, the Bible said uh, that God so loved the world. He loves everyone. Uh, red, yellow, black and white, rich, poor. Uh, uh, it doesn't matter. God loves them. He puts value upon everyone. Uh, uh, you can look around and uh, most folks don't value too much, uh, but God values everybody. Uh, that's why I tell folks, uh, I get around young people and they'll say, preacher, uh, nobody loves me. Uh, I beg your pardon. Uh, there's a God that values you. Uh, there's somebody that loves you. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're old. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're young. Uh, it does, that's why it's so important not to abort babies. God values them. Uh, God values the old. Uh, that's why we're not killing off the old people. Uh, God values them. Uh, we've got to understand, uh, as the prodigal was, uh, God the Father valued that son. Uh, he understood the importance of him, and God values you. Uh, we've got to understand God values people. Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, he uh, See, the prodigal, uh, he didn't go after God, but uh, uh, the prodigal, he didn't go after uh, anything but the world. Uh, but God wanted to make sure that he got saved. God cares about his people. God cares about what it is. But not only that, but you'll see that the power is only in your own hands. May I say, God will never make you be saved. God don't make nobody get saved. You see, the lost sheep, the shepherd went after him. You see the lost coin, they swept the house to find it. But you see, the prodigal, the father didn't go after him. It had to, it had, it had to be when he came to himself, the father accepted him back. See, there's got to be a thing in our lives. God don't make you be saved. He'll chastise you. He'll, he'll send the Holy Spirit. But he says, if you don't accept the free gift of God, my son, I'll not accept you. You've got to be, come to yourself to accept that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. But we see here that God, uh, you see the importance of a lost soul. But I want to show you three or four things here in verse number 20. And then we'll get out of here. I'm going to do it quick. And I know some of you, like me, you've worked all day. You're tired. And I'll not hold you long. But you'll see the, the importance of the Father. Verse number 20, you'll see. The first thing I want you to see is you see what the Father sees. The first thing it says uh, uh, there that when it was a great way off, the Father saw him. Saw him. Yes. See what we got to understand that he didn't see the mistakes. Yeah. He didn't see what everybody else seen. That's right. He didn't see what the other son seen. The other son seen a brother that was took everything that his inheritance and spent it, and uh, he seen uh, everything bad. He didn't see what the servants saw. The servants probably seen a dirty boy that was in uh, that just come out of the hog pen and yeah. everything. But the father was there and he seen his son. May I say, when the Lord looks at us, uh, He doesn't look at our mistakes. Uh, he doesn't look at our failures. Uh, he doesn't look at where we come from. Uh, he sees one thing, and that's Jesus. He sees Him. He sees His Son. Uh, and I'm glad of that. Uh, now, now, it amazes me. Now, when you get this uh, uh, really into your heart and mind, uh, you don't care about what everybody else sees. The older I get, the more I, 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 I used to care what people thought. The older I get, uh, it doesn't matter as much anymore. I was telling my mom, I said, you know, things don't matter to me anymore. I, I'm not going to argue and fuss over that stuff. And uh, it amazes me, the older you get, the more closer I guess you get to home, uh, that you begin to prioritize things and, and think that don't really matter. Uh, I, I don't care if uh, uh, somebody unfriends me on Facebook. I'm not going to lose sleep. Uh, I don't care if uh, the folks down the road get mad at me and uh, won't talk to me. 
it doesn't bother me. I'm going home and sleeping. You know why? Because it's not about what they see. It's about what he sees. See, the father realized when he looked at, over the hill and he seen the son, he said, I see him. I don't see any of the mistakes. I don't see uh, where he's come from. I don't see what he's been involved in, but I see my son. And, and that's what God does to us. When he looks at us, I'm glad. He don't look at our mistakes. I'm glad he don't look at our failures. Now, people will look at you and they'll, uh, no matter how much you try to be a good Christian, no matter what, they'll look at you and they'll pick mistakes. Uh, they'll pick failures. Uh, they'll pick everything. Uh, I, I was on my way to church and uh, I got a little ink spot on my shirt and I said, Lord, everybody's going to see that tonight. It doesn't matter to me. Uh, you can go home and say, uh, that preacher got an ink spot. It doesn't matter. But you're not seeing me uh, the way God sees me. Uh, we are all full of mistakes, but I'm glad God don't see us that way. Uh, I'm glad when God looks at me, uh, he sees, like Brother Brian talked this week, uh, this past Sunday, he sees the blood being applied to the door. Uh, I'm glad that he's not like that. And you that are here, you need to make up in your mind, I'm not, I'm not worried about what they say. Uh, I'm not worried about what this one says. I'm worried about what he sees and if he sees Jesus I'm okay it doesn't matter what I wear it doesn't matter what I look like it doesn't matter if I got a head full of hair or bald as a cucumber it doesn't matter it doesn't matter and we need to let our young people know this in the world we're living in it's all about what you look like what you're wearing what you uh, how, how skinny you are how buff you are and all this they need to understand the most important thing isn't what they see, it's about what he sees. So the father, you see, number one, you see what the father sees. Uh, he didn't see the mistakes. He's seen the son. Number two, uh, you see the compassion of the father. The Bible says he arose and came to his father, but when he was yet a great way off, the father saw him and had compassion. This word compassion, I, I looked it up. It's a Greek word for stomach. Emotions. See, there's, there's something about when you're dealing with emotions and not rational. Rational, the father would have seen where he'd been. Rationally, look how dirty he is. Look what all he's done. Now, now being a parent, if my son did this, and rationally, I'd probably say, yeah, you're welcome home, but you ain't going to be treated like you was before. Things are going to change. You ain't, I ain't giving out like I did before. I'm glad the Lord don't look at it rationally. I'm glad the Lord, and we got to understand the Lord don't look at us rationally. He looks at us with compassion. And, and, and the way that God looks at us, and, and we've got to let lost people understand this because we've got a bad thing that before we ever get saved uh, that we think God is going to uh, demand something more of us or he's going to uh, 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 chastise us and beat us because of where we've been and everything. The devil just tells you all kinds of things when you're lost, uh, but we need to explain to folks God is a God of compassion. Uh, he loves his people. Uh, he has compassion for them, and he doesn't deal like we want to deal with folks. Uh, uh, we want to deal with them. Uh, we're all about eye for an eye, and if they slap me, I'm going to slap them. But God's not like that. He's compassionate. And when this father looked at his son, the Bible says he had compassion. Uh, we he didn't he didn't deal with him like we would. Uh, and I'm glad God's not like me. Uh, I'm glad God don't do things like I do uh, because I would have probably dealt a little bit different. Uh, I, I would have probably dealt a little bit different with me. Uh, uh, see, God so loved us, uh, the Bible said, that he gave his only begotten son. Uh, he loved us enough to send his son, uh, and it wasn't uh, the good one. It wasn't preacher Roy. It was lost Roy. It wasn't, it wasn't uh, preacher Seth. It was lost Seth. That's when he loved him. Now, it's easy. Now, uh, it's easy for me to say I would die for one person in here. That's probably my wife. The rest of you, you on your own. I love you, but God bless you. The only one I'm dying for, and don't act like you'd die for me. 
Amen. Ain't none of y'all taking a bullet from me. Uh, he's ready to go. I'm out of here. Uh, amen. Uh, uh, that's why we sing the song, Be Ready to Go. Uh, amen. You never know. But may I say, God didn't die for somebody that treated him good. Jesus, Jesus didn't die for just somebody that was good natured. Jesus died for somebody that slapped him. Somebody that spit upon his face. That did everything wrong. That's compassion. And we as a people of God need to understand. We always, uh, I, there's a big turnout uh, a few uh, years ago with WWJD. What would Jesus do? It's easy to say Jesus is going to have compassion. It's harder for us. Amen. When somebody does us wrong, it's harder to have that compassion. I, I love documentaries. I was telling my mom last night when I was visiting her, I said, uh, I was watching a documentary the other day and uh, this man just murdered a bunch of people. Everybody turned on him. He was in jail for life, waiting the death sentence. Everybody turned their back on him but one person, his mama. You know why? Compassion. Amen. She wasn't dealing with rational. Everybody else was like, he deserved it. He, uh, he's bad, he's this. Yeah. And, and, and they interviewed his mom and they said, he did all this. He did all this killing and everything. And she said, yeah, but he's still my son. He's still my boy. He's still somebody that I gave birth to. See, now we, we got to understand that Jesus is, and God is just like that. This father, when he looked down, he said, yeah, and God knows what we've done. But I'm glad that he don't deal rationally. He deals compassionately. He deals with his gut. And when he looks at us, he says, that's my son. That's my daughter. That's mine. And see, that's how this father, the father dealt compassion. Number three, the Bible says this, that he ran. He ran. Now, we, we can overlook that. But when you study about this culture, it was not a popular thing. It wasn't proper for a Jewish man to run. It wasn't a proper thing. But this father run. And I, 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 I'm just a little bit different. Y'all know I've been around here long enough. Y'all know I'm a little bit different. They don't have medication for what I've got. <laughs> uh, I'm just different. And I think, I think about this. And I, I, I can just see the prodigal as he's walking down the road, Jeff, thinking, boy, when I get home, daddy's going to be mad. Daddy's going to disown me. And I just want him to just take me back as a hired servant. I, I don't want to be a son anymore. I just want to be treated just like he would the good servants that he's got. Daddy treated them good, and I just want to go back to that. And I just, I'm hungry. I, 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 I've got a hole in my heart. There, there's something that nothing else filled back there but home. And home is with the Lord. And I, I, I just want to get back. And I, I can see the boy walking. And just like many of us, when we come to uh, the church that first time and before we got saved, we just started thinking, well, the Lord can't take me back. The Lord, the Lord knows what I did last night. And the Lord knows what I've done this last week. The Lord knows how I am. But as he got closer, I, I can just see there's a cloud of dirt coming up. And he says, boy, daddy must have seen and sending, sending the chariot out to tell me not that I ain't welcome. I ain't welcome home no more for what I've done. And as it got closer and closer, he said, no, that's my dad. I'm, I, I didn't see my dad run when my brother was born. I, I, I've never seen my daddy run. But now he's running to meet me. See, we've got to understand God desires us to be saved. I, I, I believe that, that morning I got saved, I, it was a bigger church. and I, I set, slid in late and slid in the back of the church and 
had holes in my blue jeans and smelled uh, like the hog pen I was at the night before. Didn't take a shower and I was back there. But I believe when I stood up that God come running. He loved me so much. We, we talk about when, uh, uh, just accepting the gift and just getting up sometimes, just getting up. That, that right there, you, you almost get saved right then. You know why? Because I believe God is waiting. I believe every Sunday and every Wednesday and every day, he's just like, come on, come on, come on. All you got to do is move. And he becomes running and he wants to meet you. And that's the love of a good father. That's the love of God, last but not least. You see verse number 20, not only run but he fell on his neck. And what did he do? Come here, Seth. He fell on his neck. Now, don't get no ideas. <laughs> he kissed him. Now, why did he kiss him? You say he loved him. Yeah, that's, that's true. But when you really study this out, you'll understand in that culture, every morning the father would wake up and he would anoint himself. It's where we get cologne from. He'd put, put this anointing and spice on his beard. The Bible said he fell upon his neck. Here was a dirty, mm -hmm. dirty boy out of the hog pen, smelled. And he knew when he got closer to the servants, the servants would smell him. But he began to rub that anointing, that oil upon him. So what others might have seen when he got closer, mm -hmm. when he got a little bit closer, they'd be like, yeah, he, he didn't. He looked bad down there, but he don't smell like he used to. He don't look like he used to because that anointing began to wash away Amen. that that the world put upon him. Yeah. Yeah. See, now that's what the Lord does to us. Yeah. Now, we, we like to think that when you get saved... Uh, you're cleaned up, you walk out, everything's good. But the truth of the matter is, it don't work that fast. It takes time. It takes some learning. It takes some anointing to, of that oil to rub off. And I'm glad that I'm not what I used to be. I'm glad when I got saved that he began to work on me. And as this boy got closer and closer back home, that anointing off his father's beard, what he smelled like down the road, he didn't smell like when he got back home. No. And I'm glad that we got to understand, sometimes we as a Christian think when someone gets saved, they've got to get it all together right then. Amen. Yeah. I, I remember the first church I pastored, a man come in and he had long hair and earrings and he got saved, and somebody said, I bet you he'd go home and cut his hair. I said, you crazy. It probably took him 10 years to grow that. It ain't going to happen overnight, and it didn't. Weeks went by. He still come to church. Then one day he showed up, and his hair was cut. Then the earrings was gone. See, we, we think that everything's got to happen fast. It don't happen that fast sometimes. Sometimes there's a growth. they are babes in Christ. Quit trying to put things on them to try to get them to grow up quicker than they need to be. That's why I don't judge people and look down at my nose at people because they might just be in second grade. And guess what? We ain't none of us graduated college yet in this thing. We're still learning. I remember the uh, old, uh, you that's a little older than, uh, like me, uh, you remember the Waltons and, uh, uh, and Little House on the Prairie. And Little House on the Prairie, I believe it was, the lady at the general store. I can't remember her name, Mary Beth or Miss Olson. Olson. Yeah, Miss Olson. <laughs> I'm glad somebody's watched enough of Little House on the Prairie. Yeah. Amen. But she goes to church one Sunday. She walks in and she says, I have arrived. That's the way some of us are. 
We think, well, I've been saved 20 years and I have arrived. I'm still learning. And I, I've said it a few times. Uh, the older I get, the more I realize what I didn't know. The more I'm in, the longer I'm in this thing, the more I realize I'm not as smart as I used to. When I first become a preacher, Seth, I knew everything. I had a big head. You wanted to ask me how a church ought to be run, I'd tell you exactly. You want me to tell you how many uh, songs a choir ought to sing, I'd tell you. How the deacons ought to act, how the deacons' wives ought to act, how their kids ought to act, how everybody ought to act. But now that I'm a little bit older, I realize I, I ain't know nothing. And I'm still figuring it out. That's why we can't look down our nose at people. We better have compassion and understand when they get saved, that anointing starts. And ain't none of us still, we still got some hog pen on us. We might be clean in his eyes, but every once in a while I can still smell a little stink of my flesh. That's where the apostle Paul says daily, I got to crucify this. Ain't none of y'all all that in a bag of chips. <laughs> y'all might act like it, but we all a bunch of folks, that, and folks say, well, they ain't nothing but a bunch of hypocrites. Well, the truth of it is, some of us are. But the difference is, I'm just honest. Hey, I ain't all there. I still get mad. I still, uh, I, I still get angry. The Bible says get angry and sin not. I, I like to say every once in a while, when I get angry, I don't want to just put a pillow over my wife's head. <laughs> Amen. Don't act like y'all don't. <laughs> Amen. Some of y'all some y'all t- uh, go home tonight, he'll start snoring, you'll want to put a pillow over his head. Right. Amen. Amen. I mean, that's just the truth. The Lord's still working on me. Amen. That anointing, that beard is still yeah. trying to go. Yeah, but what we've got to understand The devil will use that. The devil will use those things to get us away from the Father. He'll get in our heads and say, God's going to kill you for what you're doing. God God ain't going to forgive you. Look what you, you ain't all that. Look at everything you do. But what you need to remember is God is a compassion. He loves us. Now, I'm not giving you a license to go out here and live anyway, but I'm saying God loves you. He cares about you. And he's still working on us. The Bible says when we make mistakes, we have an advocate with the Father. We've got somewhere to go. Now, I'm just honest enough to say when I make mistakes, I pray. And I say, God, forgive me. And I go back and I say, put a little bit more anointing on me. I need more. There's sometimes I need a whole lot more. There's sometimes I, I was driving from Greenville back to Jonesboro today, and I needed some. They had a lot of Christmas traffic. They had a lot of Yankees that don't know how to drive. <laughs> they all moving here, and I, I'm telling you, they don't know how to drive. And I prayed for them all the way from Greenville. Uh, so I prayed the Lord deal with them or take the license. And, uh, give them a flat tire where they get out of my way. I'm, he's still working on me. You pray for me. And I'll pray for you. We've got to be honest. And don't let the devil discourage us. And we've got to tell other people. We've got to tell the lost folks, hey, I know the devil's telling you, you can't go back home. There's people that would love to be back at church. That's been out for months. They used to go here. They don't need us to judge them. They don't need us to look down our nose when they walk in and say, where you been? Right. You been in the hog pen? You smell like you been in the hog pen. No, we don't need that. We need to be like the Father. Have compassion. Boy, it's good to see you. We've missed you. Let me hug on you. Let me, maybe something I've got will rub off on you. Because by the grace of God, it ain't us. We need to understand it don't take much. Now, it don't take much. Folks, folks say, well, I, I'm so strong in the Lord, I'd never uh, get out of church. You better, yeah. you better watch it. Yeah. I tell folks, most folks are one paycheck away from being broke. 
We're one doctor visit, one bad thing happening in our life before we quit church. That's why we better stay prayed up. And that's why we better have compassion like Jesus does on everybody. That's why it wouldn't hurt some of you. Pick up a phone and say, hey, boy, I miss you. I miss you. Don't ask them where they've been. Don't ask them what they've been involved in. It ain't none of our business. We just love you and miss you. We want to have compassion. Not look down our nose at everybody. Just say, God loves you. And if you're one of his, he'll take you back. Don't be afraid God going to beat you to death. I grew up in churches and heard preachers preach like God was going to kill us all. And I was like, good Lord, I'm so bad, I'm gonna, uh, God's going to beat me before I get home. I'm glad I didn't get what I deserved. And the prodigal didn't get what he deserved. He got compassion. And that's nothing more than the love of God. As ever heads bowed, ever eyes closed, no one's looking around. You here tonight and you say, Preacher, the Lord's still working on me. Pray for me. I want to pray for you. Maybe you, you, you're not all that. And I, it's honest to be able to say we're not. You say, Preacher, pray for me. I, I, I've got family members and sometimes I'm not as compassionate as I should be. Sometimes I get mad at them for the way they live. And I, I'm glad God don't look at you. Look at them that way. God bless you. See that hand. You say, pray for me. God bless you. See that hand. We've got loved ones, and it, it amazes me. The, as Christians, probably the hardest people we're harder on is our own families. And we ought to love them more than anybody. And you say, preacher, I love them, but I don't like what they're doing. Now, I know you don't like what they're doing. And to be honest, they probably don't like what they're doing. They're just trying to fill that hole, that puzzle piece. And they just need somebody to tell them there's a God that loves them, a God that cares about them, and a God that just wants them to come to him, and he'll do it. Anyone else say, preacher, pray for me. God bless you. See those hands. Our dear, kind, heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, Father, for thine love and thine mercy. Lord, we thank you, Father, for this group that has come out on Wednesday night. Dear Father, Lord, we pray that we've encouraged them. We pray that they can look to thee and know the great love that you have for them. Lord, may we be thankful for the compassion that you've showed us, the love that you've showed us. And Lord, we didn't deserve it, but Lord, we're so glad that you gave it to us. Lord, we pray to Father, Lord, may we have compassion upon other people. And Lord, may we just pray for them and love them and let them know there's a God that loves them and cares for them. For it's in your sweet name I pray. Amen. Amen. It is good to see each one of you tonight. Anyone have anything uh, before we leave? If not, pray. Gentry wanted me to announce. He wants to have practice Sunday afternoon at 4. Sunday afternoon at 4. So you that got. Jim Youngins. I know some, it's not easy. You think it, it ain't easy standing up here looking out. And if you don't smile at them, it makes it worse. Uh, uh, I tell folks all the time, uh, you should see what you look like on my end. Hey, Amen. Some of you, some of you smiling, some of you frowning, some of you look mad. Uh, so, so uh, it's not easy. So pray for him, Youngins. Pray for Gentry and all the work that's going on. Anyone else? If not, God bless you. You're free to go.